Broadcasting live from the School of Athens, this is Europe and the People Without History with Mr. Olson, everyone's favorite AP history review and lesson service. So sorry it's turned into a lesson service today, kids, but I've got sick little ones at home, and if I sound a little weird in this video, it's me trying to not wake them up. Anyways, we're going to have some fun, but before we do that, let's take a look at our week at a glance. So last time you talked about the Industrial Revolution and its causes by watching the Why It Happened Here video. Heard that video caused some snafus, but in the event that you didn't finish it, you'll have some time today, or just turn in your video guide after you answer the short answer at the end, as I will go ahead and take a look at those once they are turned in after today. During today's class, we're going to play an industrial revolution game. It's going to be fun, I promise, so buckle up and let's have a good time. Homework for tonight is going to be to read either Strayer or AMSCO. There's three AMSCO uh, sections for this one, and other things that I need you to do that might have already been done or perhaps are, you know, been put on the back burner for other stuff, the Nationalism Directed Story, the Industrial Re Revolution Video Guide from last class, and your Semester 1 exam reflections should all be done by the end of the day today. But you might get a chance to work on those things depending on how fast we go. Next class we'll do our debate. Sorry for that one. And especially sorry to those who might have had to skip robotics to do their debate. We would have had another day, but sorry, didn't anticipate this one. And we might even get some Karl Marx in there. Good times. Then, in the middle of next week, we will talk about Russia and Japan, all grown up and industrialized. Well, kind of, things to look forward to. So, in order to understand the Industrial Revolution and its effects, today we're going to do the Urban Game. Now, Urban Game is a good time as long as you listen. See, you need to be a good, complicit worker, just like all those toiling industrial masses that suffered through the Industrial Revolution at its heyday. Here's what you need for today. You need an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. They should be on a cart in the front of the room. There's other cities up there. Don't pick those ones up. Leave them alone. Or... Whoever is standing in for me today should have access to some 11 by 17 paper that you can use. So go ahead and get that. You also need a pencil and you need two other colors that are not a pencil. So that means a colored pencil will work, a pen will work, highlighters are good. You can even use markers. You need a pencil and two other colors. That's confusing when I'm in person. Hopefully it's not confusing when I'm on video. All right, so pause me. Make sure everybody has those. Everybody in the room. I think you know who I'm talking about. Everybody has those. And once everybody's got them, you can start me back up again. Okay, for this activity, we are going to go ahead and tell a story. And while we tell it, you are going to make a city. At the end, you're going to turn your city in in its beauty and awesomeness. And I... I'm going to score it. So make sure that you keep up. I'll explain those rules in more clarity in a second. So all you got to do for right now is create your little pre-industrial village. So the year is 1700 and the nation is England. The scene begins in a rural village. Draw a river across your paper connecting east to west and put the paper long ways, a hot dog ways or whatever you people call that. So draw a river connecting east to west. The river should be about an inch wide. Draw a wooden bridge across the river. Four roads originating from each direction. Now I know that part's really confusing. So here's ideally what that would look like. You have a river, inch wide. You have a bridge that goes across it. And you should have roads. The road should be no bigger than an inch wide. Don't make like massive interstates here, people. It's a pre-industrial village. All right. A river. A wooden bridge across it, four roads going in each direction, ten houses, a church, a cemetery, a store, a pub, a coal mine, and at least 50 trees all over the paper. There should be a legend drawn on the board in the room that shows you how to draw these things. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pause me to make sure that everybody can find that stuff. Okay. And then play me once everybody kind of has an idea of what's going on. This should take no more than four minutes. All right. So I'm going to start a timer for four minutes right now. And then I will resume talking once that four minutes is over. Go ahead.
Okay, you're two minutes into your four minute drawing time. So again, you should have a river across the paper, a bridge, roads going in each direction, about 10 houses that are not too big, but not microscopic. You should have a church, you should have a store, you should have a pub, you should have a coal mine, and then all of a sudden you've got your city. You've got about a minute and 30 seconds left. Don't use mine as a specific model. Come up with your own. Your city planners here, people. Use that creativity. Well, 40 seconds left, 40 seconds. And that is going to be time for the first one. Okay, so again, you should have a rural village. It looks like this. It doesn't have to look exactly like that, but it should have those things. Now, before we go on any further, there is a legend in Schoology that you can pull up if you'd like to get an idea of how to draw the various things as our game goes on. I'm going to ask you to put more stuff on your city. Some of them is written on the board and some of it is not. So if you want an idea of how to draw things like a jail or um, a school or a theater, you can go ahead and pull up that legend um, on Schoology. All right. So now I'm going to tell you a story and you have to follow the directions as we go. All right. So here is the pre prelude to the story. It's 1700. AD in England and life here in village England is similar to other villages across Europe in the 18th century. Change comes traditionally very slow. People generally move at a much slower pace and had access to very little information in their, outside of their village. Three out of four people were rural and lived in villages like the one you will be constructing. Home life and work life were closely integrated as most work was done in nearby fields. Every member worked from sunup to sundown. The family was an economical unit as well as a social one. Sons worked with their fathers and daughters worked with their mothers. The homes of villagers were small and inad with inadequate light and ventilation. Some even had thatched uh, roofs, which means that they had mice crawling all over the place all the time. All members of the family slept in the same room and sometimes even shared living quarters with livestock. I want you to think about that. All members slept in the same room and people made babies. Anyways, life expectancy was slightly over 40 years of age. Most people married in their teens and had babies before they were 20 in the same room. One baby out of three died before their first birthday. Only half of them lived to 21. In fact, people didn't even name their kids until they were a year old because so many of them died. England was divided by social classes based primarily upon wealth. Most people were poor Har armors left over from the feudal times. A few were middle class, a small few were aristocrats, and usually owned large tracts of land in the English countryside, and this was usually by ancient titles, so they've had it forever. Land was the source of wealth, livelihood, and well-being. Having enough land to produce adequate food or to produce even enough to sell or even rent was a key to survival. The main occupation in England was farming. Most English peasants or far farmers did their own or farm their own land, however small it was. Villages were connected by a system of dirt roads that became almost impassable during the wet season. 
As a result, transportation was often slow and trade beyond your village was not easy. Most English farmers never visited any place further than 25 miles from their birthplace ever. Okay, I'm going to continue reading, but if you haven't already, keep drawing trees. You need lots of trees drawn in pencil. Trees in pencil as they are a usable resource. Okay, finally, for fuel, there are two sources, firewood, which hopefully you're drawing trees right now, and coal. Nearly every English village had a coal mining operation. These mines employed a small number of village dwellers, especially in the winter. Over the next 100 years, a revolution as significant as the Neolithic one will completely change life in your little village. Some historians, including this one, believe this revolution is the most fundamental in human history. We will experience some of the changes over the next half hour. The revolution would become known as the Industrial Revolution. Hopefully you're still drawing trees. Okay, rules of this activity are easy. You're an industrial worker. So you're going to listen to what I, the middle manager, have to say on the progression of society during the Industrial Revolution. You're going to create a city based on the story I tell, tell you. The story will be divided into different scenes. That's when you're going to use different colors. So hopefully you're still drawing trees in pencil and everything else on your page is drawn in pencil. This is not an art project. This is an exercise in listening. Each scene will be read only once, which means you need to listen carefully. At the end of each scene, you will be given instructions on what to add to your village or city. And because it's the Industrial Revolution people, the pace will quicken as the story progresses, and only the most feeble will fall behind. Nobody will wait to catch you up. When it's called time, you will turn it in, and it will be graded by me picking a random building to count. So you need to make sure that you have them all. All right. So if you need to pause me, pause me, but everybody should have a village in front of them that they've drawn with a bunch of trees. They should have a pencil, two other colors, and this should be done on an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. All right. If that not everybody's there, you can pause now. Otherwise, industrial revolution begins. Start using pencil or pen or highlighter color number two. Round one. It's 1745. It is now 1745 and England's geography is unique in that no section of the country is more than 90 miles from the sea and there are many navigable rivers that crisscross the countryside. An enterprising young capitalist group, you people, decide to invest your money in the construction of a canal. The profits are astounding. The, this new revolution in transportation reduces the price of raw materials and reduces the cost of transportation dramatically. Coal could now be transported from the mines to the towns for half the price of horse and wagon transportation. Since you invested your money, you make a tidy profit. Side note, just in case you don't know, a canal is a man-made river that connects two other bodies of water. You only have one body of water, though, so you're going to connect it to itself. There should be a, a drawing of a canal on a board, but it's basically like a little river that juts out from your river for a little while and then comes back into it. It allowed people to move water in a certain direction so they could use it for power, as you'll see you'll need in a second. All right. So for round one, 1745, you need to build yourself one nice home anywhere on a map. It's your home, so it can look however you want it to look. And then you need to build a canal somewhere along your river. It must jut out from the river, run parallel to it for a little bit, and reconnect. You have 40 seconds. And I will give you time prompts along the way. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Round two. It's now 1750, and for a variety of reasons, soap, diet, sanitation, etc., there is a population explosion in England and your little village. The cursed bubonic plague is over, and the little ice age is coming to an end, so things that for centuries have wiped out your village have been eliminated due to the disposal of sewage, the canal, and the little ice age being over. So, draw five houses for those new people. You have 30 seconds. Remember, your houses should not be too big, but they should not be microscopic either. 
I would say they should be no more than an inch wide and an inch tall. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Round three. It's now 1760. The people of your village need a bit more food and goods to meet the needs of the new inhabitants. Coincidentally, a number of other noteworthy events occur in 1760. First, a number of new mechanical inventions for farms are developed. One is called the seed drill, and the other is the horse-drawn cultivator. Also, farmers begin to experiment with new, more productive farming practices like crop rotation, new fertilizers, and new livestock breeding techniques. Consequently, farm production is significantly increased. Where's that land to test all that farming stuff coming from, though? The commons, of course. A series of laws are passed by English Parliament called the Enclosure Acts. This means that landowners can buy pieces of common land from the government, fence off a three-by-three three box on your paper to be reserved for the new commons. Okay, I'm going to stop here because this is going to require some explanation. You need to find a three-by-three three box. It's like the size of a post-it note and put a square around it. What used to be common land was your entire paper, okay, with the exception of the little houses and whatnot. All the rest of the unused land belonged to everybody. They could use it for different things. They could meet there. They could gather there, whatever. Now all that land is up for sale, and we've only reserved a common area of three by three. The three by three common area can have trees in it, but it should have nothing else because it's the commons. It's for everybody to use. So draw a three by three inch box to be reserved for the commons. Additionally, add five more houses and one nice house for that person making all the money off the enclosure axe. You have 30 seconds. And while you are drawing these things. Let me just say that the enclosure acts are one of the most uh, important causes of the Industrial Revolution because it took land that was communal and made it private, a process that we will see more and more over the time that the Industrial Revolution develops. All right, five, four, three, two, one, and round Four. It's now 1773, and a man named Richard Arkwright invents a new machine that can spin and weave cloth a hundred times faster than could be done by hand on a farm. He calls this new machine the water frame. Since the water frame was so large, a special place was needed, and the first factory for prodding cloth was built. So what you're going to do is you're going to add one factory. The factory uh, must be placed on the river because that's how it was powered. Remember back to your old human geo days. Don't add any smoke to this factory. Make sure it, it is on the river or the canal and has a water reel and add five more houses. I'm going to give you 35 seconds. So for those of you that were in human geo last year, you should have learned that water was a major source of power in the early industrial revolution phase because they would put a mill in the river. They would use the stream or the current to spin the wheel and the wheel would spin the stuff inside the factory. And so that's how Richard Arkwright's water frame worked. Maybe you even watched Mill Times last year, half cartoon, half people talking. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Around five, it's 1774 and workers are needed to work in your new factory. Machines have taken the place of people on the farms, and the enclosure acts have forced many people to move to your town that is now becoming a city. Let me explain that. The enclosure acts encloses on common areas that people used to use and benefit from, and since they can't benefit from them anymore, they have to look elsewhere for their li livelihoods. And so they move to growing towns and growing cities. So you're going to add 15 houses, one church, one pub, and one store. You may draw additional roads if you need to get access to these new buildings and one additional bridge. I'm going to give you 45 seconds for this one. I'll be back when that 45 seconds is over.
and five, four, three, two, one, round six. The profits from the first textile factory are enormous. New factories are built in your community. The early owners of these factories called themselves capitalists because they had the capital or money to purchase the raw materials, the building, the water frame, and pay their workers a fixed wage and make a profit. Usually they got that money via investment from the outside, but you already know that because it was in the documentary you watched last time. Go ahead and add five new factories. All must be on the riverbank and five houses. I'm going to give you 40 seconds. The factories are multiplying people. Factory, factory, factory. And five, four, three, two, one. Good. Round seven. It is 1780, and unemployed workers from surrounding areas flood into your community looking for work. Although wages are low, they look attractive to starving families. Housing is in great demand for the first time. A new kind of housing is constructed called a tenement. Sounds fancy, right? Dozens of families reside in under one roof in a tenement. It's like an apartment building, only really, really crowded, with no more than one room for per family. Add five of those things because you just got so many people. 30 seconds to add five tenements. Five, four, three, two, one. Fantastic. Lots of high density housing. Round eight, 1781. More workers need to live, eat, shop, drink, and worship. In addition, boys were the only ones to be formally educated at this time, and then only the very wealthy attended school. Since workers work six days a week, the only day of rest is on Sunday. So, you need to add one store, one pub, and one church. Also, one school for boys only. So, make, so go ahead and draw a school and write boys on it in some place. I'm going to go ahead and give you 40 seconds for this. And let me take this chance to remind you, there's a legend in Schoology that you can look at that has a uh, example of what you can use at, to draw each place. There should be a le legend on the board. I'm not 100% sure if it was erased or not, but it doesn't have all the buildings going forward. So um, if you want to open that legend, you can. Okay, one store, one pub, one church, and one school for boys. You've got 25 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Great. There's a picture of a pub in case you wonder what a real, real one looks like. All right, round nine, 1782. Workers work long, arduous hours in the factories. The average workday begins at 6 a.m. and ends at 9 p.m. There is only a 30-minute break for lunch. After, after work, exhausted, stressed out, and alienated workers stop at their favorite pub for refreshment and relaxation. Alcohol to begins to be consumed in record amounts. Add five more pubs, destroy five houses, which means erase five of the houses you drew initially, and add four tenements instead. So now we're destroying houses and adding tenements. With all that destruction, you should have a little bit of time. I'm going to give you 35 seconds.
in five, four, three, two, one. Round 10. The year is now 1783. Workers are barely eking out a marginal existence. Still, there are a few families whose lifestyle is comfortable, if not luxurious. This would be the aristocracy. These are the large land-owning farmers and factory owners. Handsome manor houses are built, and some are lavishly filled with expensive art. These new rich can now enjoy some of the refinements that the aristocrats have been enjoying for a long time. Food, servants, furniture, education, carriages, clothing, etc. So you have a group of new elites that emerge because of the money being made from this emerging industrial revolution. Add two large homes, luxury ones. You can make them nice. They could have more than one chimney, for example, because, you know, fireplaces are really fancy. Add one factory and 15 regular houses for management. Note, at this time, you can start to erase trees if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and give you about 40 seconds for this one because there's a lot of luxurious housing to be made. And five, four, three, two, one, stop. Put down the color you're currently working with. So you did pencil first, you moved on to a second color, and it's now time to pick up that third color. And that third color is going to signify everything that comes after the invention of the steam engine. So you're on color number three, and it's 1780. Five. A man named James Watt invents a new machine called a steam engine. It allows factories to be built away from the river. The main business in England is still textile manufacturing. You are going to add 10 factories, this time with smoke. You're going to add smoke to all the pre-existing factories and add one nicer house since people can continue to get rich. You're going to add five houses for middle managers. So that's 10 factories with smoke, but you can put them anywhere you want because that's the fantastic thing about the steam engine. It doesn't be keep you beholden to the river. So 10 factories, add smoke to all your other factories, add a really fancy house and five houses for managers. I'm going to give you 40 seconds for this one. And only 40 seconds to build 10 factories because with the steam engine, stuff is so much more efficient than it had been in the past. Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, should be all factoried out. Round 12, 1800, a man named Henry Court has just invented a new process that makes it possible for coal, which is fortunately in abundant supply in England, to be used as a primary fuel in the new iron industry. Consequently, your town is thrust into the new age of heavy industry. You need to add two new coal mines and a new iron bridge to replace the wooden one. You also want to add five houses. Okay, so you could draw this iron bridge anywhere you want, and you can just draw it in solid to indicate that it's iron. Okay, two new coal mines, an iron bridge to replace the wooden one in five houses. You have 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. 
and stop. Round 13, it's now 1815, and we see the coal industry flourish. There's a great demand for coal now, home heating, fuel for the steam engine, iron production. Although in the 1700s, coal miners were adults, now they're typically children between 8 and 14. The work is dangerous and terribly unhealthy. Children become the victims of black lung, explosions, and accidents. Their growth is stunted as they spend most of their 14-hour day stooped over. They are malnourished and unable to exercise or eat properly. At a cemetery, let me give you 10 seconds to add a cemetery and mourn all those dead kids. And... Good. Round 14. The year is now 1820. The existing dirt roads cannot accommodate heavy industrial traffic. The steam engine is used in the creation of the railroad. Now you need to add one continuous railroad line that connects all factories with all the coal mines. A railroad that connects all factories with all coal mines and add five houses for railroad builders. I'll give you 30 seconds to sort out that mess. Go ahead. Ten seconds. Railroad line connecting all your factories and coal mines might get a little messy. I can't believe you didn't expect that one. You didn't plan for it. Five houses for railroad builders. Four, three, two, one. Good. Round 15. It's 1837. This new industrial revolution in transportation draws thousands of people to your community. Soon, there, are, there becomes a surplus of workers, the great reserve army of capital. Capitalists who wish to ensure their profits decide to hire women and kids over men because they can perform the same factory labor at one half the price. More and more children leave their homes to work. Depressed, ashamed, and angry about their wives and children toiling in factories, many men turn to crime and often the social life of the pub often spending any money they have on beer. For the first time in England's history, alcoholism appears in epidemic proportions. Family life that existed for hundreds of years in England is disrupted. Family members seldom see, see each other or eat together. Add one jail, two pubs, and two tenements. 25 seconds. One jail, two pubs, two tenements. Ten more seconds, and remember you can continue to erase trees if you need to. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Round 16. We move to 1838. The working conditions in factories continue to worsen. Working conditions in both of these areas are, were appalling. Many workers contracted the deadly factory fever or white lung disease. Other workers were injured on the job in factory accidents. There were no protective railings around huge moving machines. Children weakened from lack of sleep and food often stumbled into the machinery and were ripped to shreds. That's nice. Women with long hair that came undone often got caught in the machinery. Regardless, if you were unable to work, you were fired. There was no health insurance. Remember that reserve army of labor? There were always a daily line of unemployed workers waiting to fill vacant jobs. Add two hospitals and one cemetery. You have 15 seconds. Two hospitals, one cemetery. Morbid, sad. Eight seconds. Five Four, three, two, one. Good. Round 17. It's 1840. There is a need for quicker transportation. Coal, iron, finished products, and raw materials must be transported from one area of England to the other. In Ireland in the late 1830s, a devastating potato famine drove hundreds of thousands of Irish to England, also to America. Here is the cheapest labor possible to build more railroads. Add one more railroad line that passes east to west through your town, five houses and one tenement for those ra Irish railroad workers. One railroad line, five houses and one tenement, 15 seconds. Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. It's now 1842, and there are some advantages for many 
of the urban dwellers of the Industrial Revolution. City life is quite different from country life. For the small but growing middle class, a new cultural life is available. Museums, theaters, operas, restaurants, plays, concerts are made available. Before, only the wealthy elite could attend these events. So why don't you draw one museum, two theaters, and two private schools at one fancy nice house for a member of the middle class. You have 20 seconds to do these things. Here's your new elite really starting to flex. Ten seconds. And if you're drawing a museum, you could draw it with like a happy face and a sad face, you know, to be the drama symbol. Or you could use that for a theater. You can write M on museum, whatever you want to do. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Good. It's 1845. There are no pollution limits or controls on factories and businesses. Windows, walls, even trees are covered with layers of soot. The river that once flowed through your quiet village for hundreds of years is now unfit for drinking, bathing, or laundry. A new disease begins to take the lives of people. Malignant tumors and people begin to grow in large numbers. Black lung is on the rise. The average life expectancy for the poor is now 30 years of age. Your city is overcrowded and shrouded in factory smoke. The noise... The loss of privacy, loss of family unit shatters the peace of the old ways. Suicide rates double, then triple. You're going to add three cemeteries, one jail, and three more hospitals, all to accommodate victims of urban life. You have 20 seconds. Three cemeteries, one jail, three more hospitals, all to accommodate the victims of urban life. 10 seconds. And five, four... Three, two, one, great. This is it, 1850. New machines continue to take the jobs of workers in England. The enclosure movement also takes the job of many farmers. Thousands of people move to your city in search of jobs. You're going to add 20 houses, five tenements, two stores, one church, five factories, one pub, and another huge, nice house. We're going to go ahead and give you 30 seconds for that one. 20 houses, five tenements, two stores, one church, five factories, one pub, and another huge, nice house. 30 seconds to keep up with that new industrial demand. 20 houses, 5 tenements, 2 stores, 1 church, 5 factories, 1 pub, and another huge, nice house. 10 more seconds. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and good. So you had a city that looked like that at the beginning, all nice and bucolic. And now, likely, you're staring at an industrial nightmare. Good job. Your goal is to make sure your name is on the back of that paper and you can go ahead and turn it in to whomever is standing in for me today. And now that you are done, you can do one of these things. You can work on your nationalism story if it's not finished. You can finish the video guide from last class. The video is linked in last class's Schoology page. So if uh, you were one of the uh, victims of the fact that the file didn't play all the way through, you can go ahead and watch and finish the video guide. I just need you to get to the short answer at the end of the guide. That's what I'm going to pay most attention to. And then you can finish the semester one exam reflection if you'd like. You can work on the debate or you can start your reading for next class. By the way, there's going to be a civil service exam on the same day as a debate, just the way it's shaking out this time. I appreciate you sticking along for the ride. I hope that this works out okay without me there. And it kind of felt like I was there, hopefully, a little bit. All right, if you have any questions, email me. Otherwise, turn those things in and I will see how you did. All right, hope you all have a good weekend. And as always, this is your Buddha signing off. Don't miss me too, too much. See you later.